welcome back students. So for today, we will be also discussing about module 7, the introduction to the filarial worms. A few reminders before you watch this video lecture number one, please do take down notes. A soft copy of this presentation has been added to your smart kit. Listen attentively, avoid the necessary distractions, and of course, give extra attention to info mark with a star. Learning objectives for this module, we have discussed the morphology, the life cycle, the infective and diagnostic stages, disease-associated modes of transmission, prevention and control treatment, and the diagnostic test of filarial worms. So, so far, tapos na tayo dito sa mga nematodes na ito. We are done with Ascaris as well as Enterobius. And of course, don't forget the common name of our Trichuris trichura, which is the whipworm. This was a recall question in the board exam. We have also discussed about Capillaria, then our hookworms as well as Strongyloides turcoralis. We are also done previously with Trichinella spiralis that is known as the muscle worm or the garbage worm. So, si Wukereria bancrofti, si Brugia malayi, Loa Loa, and Onchocerca volvulus are actually the filarial worms po. Specifically, ito pong dalawa. Yung mga main characters ng filarial worm, we have first again the Wukereria bancrofti, otherwise known as the Bancrofts, filarial worm. Wa the Brugia malayi, yung kanyang common name ay, ay Malayan filarial worm. Okay, so hindi naman siya ganong nakakalito, no? Kasi nandun naman na yung term niya, like, Bukereria bancroft t tapos, ang kanyang common name is Bancroft's filarial worm. And then, yung Brugia malayi naman, yung malayi is nandun na yung term niya na Malayan filarial worm. And we also, we will, we will also be discussing about Loa Loa, which is the eye worm, at si Onchocerca volvulus, which is otherwise known as the blinding worm. So, ito po ang mga main characters ng ating filarial worms. Specifically po itong si Wukereria at si Brugia Malay. And of course, don't forget the infective stages of our parasite. We have for the filarial worms, ang kanilang infective stage is IC, L3 larva or the filariform larva. So, here are the medically important species of the filarial worms aside from those four that were mentioned before. Again, we have the principal species that is parasitic in humans. We have Wukereria again, which is can be found in the lower lymphatics. Mama, they discuss naman natin to. We will also be discussing about Brugia malayi. And then, si Loa Loa. Ito po ang kanyang habitat. Dito siya mga matatagpuan. Makalagay naman dyan. We also have, ito hindi na natin ito masyadong i-discuss mamaya. So, discuss ko to much further ngayon. We have si Manzanella perstans, which is, ang kanyang habitat is ang ating mga body cavities. Or the microfilariae of the Manzanella perstans is unsheeted and they are non-periodic, meaning uh, all throughout the day, pwede matagpuan itong parasite na ito. Okay? And then, distribution niya po is in the tropical Africa and tropical South America. So, basically, halos wala pong ganong Manzanella perstans here in the Philippines kasi nasa Southeast Asia po tayo. We also have Manzanella streptocerca. Ang kanyang habitat ay ang ating skin and subcutaneous tissues. It is, um, microfilaria niya is unsheeted. Wala daw sheet yung itsura ng ating mga microfilaria. And it's, it is also non-periodic. Distribution naman is in the tropical Africa as well. Then si Manzanella ozardi, ang habitat po niyan ay ang ating subcutaneous tissues and possibly in the body cavity. Ang microfilaria niya rin is unsheeted and they are also non-periodic. But the distribution of this naman ay sa ating tropical Americas po. And didiscuss din natin maya-maya ang ating Onchocerca volvulus, ang kanyang habitat, subcutaneous tissues. The microfilariae of the Onchocerca volvulus are unsheeted and they are present in cutaneous lymphatics. Distribution of this parasite is in the tropical Africa, North Yemen, Mexico, Brazil, Guatemala, Venezuela, Colombia, and Ecuador. So, ito yung madalas na lugar kung saan makikita itong mga parasites na ito. 
Okay, so moving on, filarial worms. Lagyan ng pinakadalawang uh, main characters natin kay filarial worms ay ang ating Wukereria bancrofti, the bancrofts filarial worm, at si Brugia malayi or the malayan filarial worm. Disease associated of these parasites, of course, we have the bancrofts filariasis, specifically po kay Wukereria yan, at yung Brugian filariasis, which is of course for Brugia malayi. Mode of transmission po ng ating mga filarial worms, normally they are vector or through mosquito. Okay, this is a good parasite po na kayang mag-transmit daw through mosquito or yung mga vector borns na po na diseases natin. And as mentioned earlier, the infective stage of this parasite is the L3 larva or the filariform larva. At the, at the diagnostic stage of this parasite, yung stage po na kaya nating makita in the laboratory is the microfilariae in the blood. Okay, magkaiba po ha ang infective stage at diagnostic stage ng parasite na filarial worms. And then the definitive host of the filarial worms is the humans, while the intermediate host po natin ay ating mga mosquitoes. Okay, I repeat, definitive host. Yung host po kung nasan ma-reach ni parasite yung full maturity niya magiging adults, humans. Intermediate host, ito yung host kung saan yung parasite natin is yung mga larva-larva lang. Mga asexual stages pa yan. Hindi pa siya fully developed. Ang intermediate host po ng ating filarial worms ay yung ating mga mosquito. Huwag pagpapalitin ha as well as the infective and diagnostic stage. Please do take note of this. This has been a recall question in the board exam. Pag tinanong po sa inyo, what is the infective stage of filarial worms in humans? Sa humans po ha, ano yung stage na kayang mag-infect sa humans? That is the L3 larva or the filariform larva. I repeat, pag tinanong daw po kayo, what is the infective stage of the filarial worms in humans? That is the L3 larva. So basically, kapag pumasok sa katawan natin through the mosquito bite, yung L3 larva, may infect tayo. Okay. What about naman pag tinanong po sa inyo, what is the infective stage of filarial worms in the mosquito? So, anong stage yung kaya mag-infect ngayon sa mosquito? That is the microfilariae. Okay? Makinig maigi ha? What is the infective stage of the filarial worms in the mosquitoes? Again, that is the microfilariae. Okay, discuss natin yan much further para mas magets nyo. Bakit ganun ma'am? Bakit magkaiba? This has something to do with its life cycle. Sige, makinig maigi. Number one, dito tayo. A mosquito that is infected with the L3 larvae, yan, yung mosquito, yung lamok. Mosquito takes a blood meal. At yung mosquito na to, di ba, sabi nga natin, meron siyang L3 larva. The L3 larva now will enter the skin while the mosquito takes a blood meal. So, di ba habang uh, kumukuha ng dugo sa atin yung mosquito na yan, may L3 larva siya, papasok ngayon through our skin yung L3 larva na nasa loob ng mosquito. Okay, so it will enter your skin. Then this L3 larvae will migrate into the lymphatics to become adults. Okay, so yung adults na yan, meron ulit yung male at female. And then the adults in the lymphatics, will migrate, adults produce sheeted microfilariae that migrate into the lymph and the blood channels. So basically, from the lymphatics, pupunta sa lymph and blood channels natin, or yung circulation, blood circulation. This adults now, ayan, the microfilariae, microfilariae po yung tawag dyan sa adults. So yung microfilariae na yan, habang nasa circulation mo, this can be ingested by an unsuspecting mosquito as well. So mosquito takes a blood meal and it can ingest the microfilariae po. That's why the infective stage of filarial worms in mosquitoes is the microfilariae. Kasi po si microfilariae yung nagsisirculate sa loob ng katawan natin, specifically po sa lymph tsaka sa blood channels. And then, itong mosquito na to kukuha yan ng dugo sa'yo. Di ba yun yung ginagawa nila? Nagsisip-sip sila ng dugo sa atin. So, once this mosquito takes a blood meal, it can ingest the microfilariae. That's why microfilariae now is the infective stage of filarial worms in mosquito. Kumbaga, si tao na infected ng filarial worms can uh, infect mosquitoes din. 
at again, the infective stage of microfilariae or the filarial worms in our insects or mosquitoes is microfilariae po. Okay? So, yun na nga. Kunwari, ito si mosquito takes a blood meal, it ingests a microfilariae from our blood. Then, inside the mosquito, microfilariae micro sheds its sheets. It penetrates the mosquito's mid-gut and migrate to the, to the thoracic muscle of our mosquito. Then, once inside the thoracic muscle, it will become an L, L1 larva papunta sa L3 larva, wherein this will migrate to the head and the mosquito's proboscis. And then, once na nandun siya, si mosquito ngayon, pwede na namang kumagat sa isang tao and then the cycle repeats. That is the life cycle of our filarial worms, basically. So again, pulitin natin from the start. Una dyan, kunwari merong mosquito na they are taking a blood meal at this mosquito is infected with L3 larva po. Then this L3 larva, the infective stage of filarial worms in humans, can enter our skin. And then, once it enters your skin, it will migrate into your lymphatics to become adults. And these adults, male and female, magmimate sila. It can produce, yan, adults produce sheathed microfilariae that migrate into lymph and the blood channels. And this microfilariae, once in our circulation, nasa blood mo, once a mosquito takes a blood meal, it can ingest the microfilariae in our blood. Then, may infect na ngayon si mosquito natin. The microfilariae now inside the mosquito shed sheets. It penetrates the mosquito's midgut and migrate to the thoracic muscles. And in the thoracic muscles, it can become an L1 larva, papunta ngayon sa L3 larva. And then once it is an L3 larva, it can now migrate to the head and the mosquito's proboscis. And then kapag nandito na siya, pwede na naman si mosquito, kumagat na naman sa ibang tao, it can take a blood meal and then it now... And it will now enter the L3, L3 larva will now enter the skin of another suspecting host, unsuspecting host. Then the cycle repeats. That is the life cycle of our filarial worms. Yun yung parang uh, rationale behind bakit si L3 larva ang infective stage sa humans. Bakit si microfilariae ang infective stage sa mosquitoes. Ganun po ang life cycle nila. So basically, kailangan talaga ng mosquito stage ang ating mga filarial worms. Kasi dito siya pwedeng, ayan, dito kasi siya pwedeng mag-develop inside the body of the mosquito. Okay, so this is how you will compare Brugia malaya at Ukereria bancrofti. They are separate uh, species po ng ating mga filarial worms. So, again, the common name of the Brugia malayi is the Malayan filarial worm, while the Wuchereria bancrofti is otherwise known as the Bancroft's filarial worm. Disease associated, Brugia malayi, we have the Malayan filara filariasis or Brugian filariasis. We also have, again, Bancroftian filariasis, Wuchereriasis, at Elephantiasis. Pakita ko sa inyo, class, kung ano yung ng Elephantiasis. Okay, so ito po ang elephantiasis. Yung lower extremities po with Wuchereria bancrofti can actually parang lumobo. Kaya siya elephantiasis ang tawag sa kanya. This is due to accumulation of lymph fluids. If you can recall, di ba ang ating mga filarial worms can actually inhabit the lymphs. Okay, then pwede kasi magkaroon ng accumulation ng... Uh, lymph fluid doon due to blockage and stuff like that. That's why ang mga taong uh, infected with Wuchereria bancrofti can actually manifest elephantiasis. And somehow this is irreversible or hindi na siya kayang ibalik sa dati if this happens. Okay. Moving on, prevalence po ng ating Brugia malaya is less than 3% while the Wuchereria bancrofti is 4 to 10%. Then, intermediate host or vector of our Brugia malayi. Diba, sabi na nga natin kanina, ang ating mga mosquito. Ayan, diba? Si mosquito ang ating mga intermediate host or vectors. Ang Brugia malayi po, iba ang kanyang mga vector sa Wuchereria bancrofti. That's why it is vital for us to know na magkaiba pong ang pinanggagalingan nila. Okay? Although they are the same filarial worms sila pareho, magkaiba po ang kanilang intermediate host or yung mga vector nila. 
So, si Brugia Malayi po, sa mga swamps natin, ang pangalan daw ng vector nila ay si Mansonia Bonnier. At yung rice fields po natin, yung vector niyan, ang scientific name daw ng mosquito na yon is Mansonia uniformis. While the Wukereria bancrofti, yung urban type, so yung mga cities, di ba yun yung urban? So, sa mga cities daw po, ang ating main vector is si Aedes poesilus due to abaka at yung mga banana leaf. Doon daw natatagpuan yan. At yung mga rural type natin, yung mga provinces daw po natin, ang main vector ng Wukereria bancrofti ay si Anaphilis minismus flavirotris. Okay, so ayan po ang mga vector ng Brugia at Wukereria. Please take note ha, magkaiba po sila. But the specimen of choice for Brugia Malaya as well as Wukereria is just the same is blood. So, sa blood po kasi nakikita yung microfilariae, yung diagnostic stage ng parasites natin. Kasi ba diba, kanina, ayan, ba diba, yung mga microfilariae nga daw natin can actually be found in the blood. That's why the specimen of choice is of course blood. Kasi nga doon nga siya matatagpuan. So, yun yung gagamitin nating specimen dito sa mga filarial worms natin para ma-diagnose natin siya. Okay, lifespan of this parasite inside the host is about 5 years, both si Brugia at si Wukereria. Ang periodicity nila, ang Brugia malay daw is nocturnal subperiodic. They are actually active at 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. That's why class kapag kayo po ay magkakalek ng suspecting patient na merong uh, filarial worm, specifically si Brugia malay, ang time of collection actually nito is under 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. po. Ito kasi class, yung sinasabi kasi dito, nocturnal subperiodic, ito yung time na lalabas yung mga microfilariae sa blood nyo. So, kung ito yung time na lalabas sila sa blood, of course, dapat itong time na to tayo kukuha para makita natin sila once na magda-diagnose na tayo or once na itetest na natin sila in the laboratory para makita natin sila. So, yan. Meron akong, uh, meron akong uh, classmate nun na... Nasa province siya ngayon. I'm not particularly sure kung anong province. Uh, Nagpe-perform sila ng ganito. Uh, blood collection kasi to Tapos, ang collection time nila is actually 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Yan. Yung isang community na yan, gising na gising lahat yun ng 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. to check if they are harboring Brugia Malay or Bukereria Bancrofti. Ganito po kasi yung dapat na oras ng pag-collect ng blood. Kasi nga, ito yung time na umiikot po sila sa circulation kasi nga they are nocturnal subperiodic po. Di ba yun yung ibig sabihin ng nocturnal, yung mga gising sa gabi? Ayan. Bukereria bancrofti po is just the same, nocturnal periodic naman siya. Okay, with regards to the morphology of Brugia malay at Wukereria bancrofti, magkaibang magkaiba po sila. Sa appearance po ng ating Brugia malay, they are also sheathed. However, ang kanyang itsura is angular, curve, and kinky. While the Wukereria bancrofti, although sheeted din naman siya, it moves in a graceful manner or sweeping curves. Ang tinatandaan ko nga actually dito, lahat ng uh, malinis, maayos, Wukereria. Kapag naman medyo ang description is parang madumi, ganun, Brugia malay yun. Kasi ang dami kong kakabisaduhin, di ba? Ayan o, ang dami niyan. But, isa sa mga tinatandaan ko, ang Wukereria bancrofti, ah, ito yung mga definition na malinis. Like, graceful, sweeping curves, tapos, ayan, discrete, separate, blah, blah, blah. Ito naman, kinky, angular, overlapping, incons inconspicuous, ganun. So, ano lang naman yun? Tip lang naman, para kung hindi na kayang kabisaduhin lahat. Lahat ng malinis, Wukereria. Lahat ng mga description na parang ang dumi, Brugia malay po. Okay? And then, again, the appearance of this is, ito po ang kanilang differences. The anal pore is, uh, in the Brugia malay is smaller, while the Wukereria bancrofti, bigger po ang kanyang anal pore. When regards to the body nuclei, nuclei po is yung parang nucleus, yung parang bilog-bilog sa loob ng katawan. The body nuclei of the Brugia malay is overlapping and inconspicuous. Inconspicuous kasi hindi nyo na makita yung parang uh, dots dots overlapping na kasi siya. Yung mga nuclei niya is hindi nyo makita yung parang boundaries nila. Hindi siya parang separates. 
inconspicuous po. While the Wukareria Bancrofti, the body nuclei are discrete, they are separate and conspicuous. Kumbaga, kaya nyo ma-distinguish yung each nuclei dun sa loob ng Wukareria Bancrofti natin. The genital cell and the excretory cell, same lang po, Brugia Malayi is big, the, while the Wukareria Bancrofti is small, the excretory cell is just the same, Brugia Malayi, big, and then Wukareria Bancrofti is small din po. While the cephalic space of our Brugia Malayi is twice as long as broad, 2 is to 1, twice as long as broad, 2 is to 1 ratio. Ang tinatandaan, tinatandaan ko dito, ang cephalic space ng Brugia Malayi, letter B, B as in second letter in the alphabet, twice as long as broad or 2 is to 1. That is the ratio of the cephalic space of our Brugia Malayi. Letter B, second letter in the alphabet, 2 is to 1. Letter B, Brugia Malayi. While the Wukereria Bancrofti is, yung cephalic space niyan is long as broad lang with a ratio of 1 is to 1. The tail end or tip of the tail of our Brugia Malayi is lightly bulbed with two nuclei. Yan, two na naman. Two as in letter B, second letter of the alphabet. alphabet. And then, yung ating tail end or tip of tail ng ating Wukereria Bancrofti is tapering without nuclei. Letter W din. Wala. Diba? Pares letter W. Tapering without nuclei. Letter W, wala. Parehas. Without, wala. W, Wukereria Bancrofti. Yun yung tip of tail or tail end ng ating Wukereria. Again, they, uh, they are tapering without nuclei. Lahat letter W. Without, wala. Wukereria Bancrofti. Yung ating Brugia Malayi, letter B, second letter in the alphabet, ang tail end niya is merong dalawang nuclei. And then the habitat of our Brugia Malayi, they are commonly found in the upper lymphatics, while the Wukereria Bancrofti can be found in the lower lymphatics po. So, ayan nga, ito yung picture ng elephantiasis that is a manifestation of Wukereria Bancrofti infection. Okay, so ito po ang itsura ng ating mga filarial worms. These are the characteristic feature. Again, the Wukereria and the Brugia Malayi are both sheeted. However, the pointed tail end, yung Wukereria Bancrofti, wala or without nuclei, free of nuclei. Ito po yan. Ito po yung tail end niya. Di ba, wala namang kayo nakikita parang bilog dyan sa loob. Dito sa tail end. So, without nuclei, while the Brugia Malayi is of course sheeted as well, which has a blunted tail tip with two terminal nuclei. Ito po yung Brugia Malayi. Ayan o, di ba may dalawang bilog dyan. Mga nuclei po yan, dalawa. While the Brugia Timori, which is just the same po ang kanyang structure with Brugia Malayi, however, mas malaki po siya or it is longer. Ayan. Same na same sila ni Brugia Malay. Si Timori, same na same. However, mas mahaba lang po ang Brugia Timori. So, that is the lymphatic filariasis. We also have those causing subcutaneous filariasis, yung ating loa-loa. They are also sheeted. Then, the nuclei extending up to pointed tail tip. Ito po ang loa-loa. And then, uh, Ochocerca volvulus is also unsheeted while it has a blunt tail tip free of nuclei. Wala daw pong nuclei ang Ochocerca volvulus dun sa kanyang tail tip. While the Manzonella streptocerca is also unsheeted, however, the blunt tail tip, it has nuclei. So, pwede nyong uh, pag-compare si Ochocerca at si Manzonella streptocerca. Kasi same sila na unsheeted. However, yung blunt tail tip nila, magkaiba yung description kung meron ba silang nuclei or, or wala. While the serous cavity filariasis, we have si Manzanella perstans. It is also unsheeted. The pointed tail tip is free of nuclei or walang nuclei daw. At si Manzanella ozardi is also unsheeted. However, the pointed tail tip has nuclei po. So, yan po. Ganyan nyo siya pag-compare-compare yung ating mga different filarial nematodes or filarial worms. 
dito nyo siya madidistinguish eh. Itong mga karakteristik na to, ito yung gagamitin yung basis para malaman nyo kung anong uh, species or anong parasite na filarial worms yung nakikita nyo in the microscope. Ito po yung karakteristik features nila. Okay, so other filarial worms. We have of course si Loa Loa which is otherwise known as the African eyeworm. The vector of Loa Loa is the Chrysop species, also known as the mango fly or the tabanid fly. This is associated with Loa Loa is calabar swelling po. This is a good example of the African eyeworm, yung calabar swelling. Ang nangyayari kasi dito, class, di ba? Kasi meron ditong uod. Ang nangyayari dyan, kaya siya calabar swelling kasi yung parang eye bugs. Kasi since na nandun si uh, parasite, Parang ang laki-laki or lumulobo or nagsiswell yung eye bugs natin. Yun yung calabar swelling. But yung uh, pagsiswell na yun, hindi lang siya yung basta hindi ka kasi nakatulog ganon. Kaya siya nagsiswell, hindi po. Hindi lang siya basta parang typical na eye bugs. Yung uh, pagsiswell na yun is because of the presence of the loa loa in this area. And then we also have si Onchocerca volvulus, also known as the convoluted or blinding worm. Ang vector po niyan ay ang ating simulium species which is otherwise known as the black fly. This is associated with this is river blindness. Ito po, river blindness to. Itong picture na ito. At hanging groin. Ito. Ito yung groin na area ng mga males. Yung groin. Ayan. Ganito na po ang nangyayari. If a specific person is infected with the Onchocerca volvulus. And please take note po, a recall question in the board exam. What is the diagnostic test for Onchocerca volvulus? That is skin snips. I repeat, the diagnostic test or the diagnosis of Onchocerca volvulus is done through skin snips po. Again, Onchocerca volvulus, convoluted worm or the blinding worm, Vector is simulium, disease associated or river blindness and hanging groin at ang diagnostic test niyan is skin snips. This is the recall question in the board exam, yung skin snips. Okay, so here is the life cycle of our loa loa. It's just the same with the typical filarial worms. Like uh, it takes a blood meal, it will end, L3 larva will enter our skin, tapos Ang um, pagkakaibahan lang with the Wukereria at saka kay Brugia Malayi is yung area po kung saan siya mapupunta. Si Loa Loa can infect the subcutaneous tissues. If you can recall, as mentioned earlier, the uh, typical Wukereria at Brugia Malayi can infect the lymphatics. However, the Loa Loa, yung adults po niya, can be found in the subcutaneous tissues. And then, the microfilariae now can be found as well in the spinal fluid, the urine, sputum, peripheral blood, and also it can be found in the lungs. So, yan po ang lowa-lowa. Nag-iba lang, no, ang posisyon kung saan nyo siya matatagpuan, yung adults as well as the microfilariae. But definitely, the life cycle, yung ikot po ng storya is just the same. There is also the presence of the vectors, then... Yung pag-ingest ni vector ng uh, infected blood, then ganun lang, parehas pa rin. Onchocerca volvulus is also the same. Yung uh, black fly stages niya is just the same with the mosquito stage of our Wukereria and the Brugia Malayi. However, yung human stages niya nga din po is nag-iiba po ang location. So, ito naman, subcutaneous tissues din. Then, the microfilariae are typically found in the skin and in the, in the lymphatics of connective tissues. But, occasionally, it can be found in the peripheral blood, urine, and sputum as well. That is Onchocerca volvulus. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions or clarifications, please do message me as this email.